Andrew. I'm Matt Dillon and welcome to another piping hot episode of Sipping the Tea where we are what girl? Sip the tea and our guests spill the tea. tea in quarantine. Yes. Oh god. Quarantine action. Now we have well. singers on here and we'll be singing that. <laughs> Listen honey we can get some lessons after. <laughs> we got Miss Mama. What's up girl? And we have little Glady. Yes, and we have in the uh, window, down, left, right. I'm not sure where she appears in the setup, honey. But we have Miss Byer, Tyra Byer. What is up, girl? You have just released your new album, Super Bloom. So yes, we want to spill some tea and, and get a pub. And how are you doing? I'm good. I'm doing awesome. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, of course girl. Well, we're going to just go ahead and dive right in. Um, we are in quarantine. It's a very interesting time right now. So share with our audience who is, you know, listening and viewing, what have been some positive and negative takeaways so far with your experience with quarantine? Oh, good question. Um, I'd say the negative things first. I'll say the negative things to get them out of the way. Um, okay. would be, I can't hug anybody and that sucks. Yes. Um, I can't hug anybody except my family that I'm in quarantine with. And I don't like it when I'm walking by someone and then I can't really be like, hi, because everybody's wearing masks and it's kind of weird now. Um, so yeah, like the no contact of humans sucks. Um, but the positive things is, you know, I get to do this show right now on live stream and I don't have to go to studios. I can just do it from my house. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's awesome and of course a big thing would be the environment and um, that's the biggest thing right now and how we all have just time for ourselves and time at home to do like new hobbies like baking and fun stuff. <laughs> so this, yeah we have all the time I, I do agree that environment for sure especially being in Los Angeles it's so nice like now when you can hike and you can see like the ocean and downtown it's like where have you been? Like Mother Nature <laughs> needed like this, you know, this reset. Totally, totally. I so, love that. I think that's, I think that's really kind of an important thing to touch on too though, because I think that reset concept is also like a reset for humanity too. Mother Nature kind of like put the brakes on and was like, y'all need to check yourselves and sit at home and, uh, you know, count your blessings, I believe. So, you have a lot to be thankful for. You have a new album that just dropped. So I want to talk about, before we get to the album, your journey as an artist, because it wasn't singer-songwriter to begin with necessarily. You were that, I think, forever within your soul. But take us through the people that don't know you, how you kicked off. Um, okay. Uh, well, I started as a kid in piano since I was like five, playing classical for like 10 years. And that was like my first intro to the art world. And then I just went into school and I did all that stuff. And I was very focused in my studies. Um, my parents wanted me to be like the lawyer, doctor, uh, you know, corporate person. And I kind of was living up to them and what they wanted me to do for a while. And then I just had something inside of me that was like, follow your heart. And then I got into some underground theater and then for about a year. And then after that, I started doing documentary films. Um, and I did a film called I Met a Man from Burma, which helped um, release like a Burmese refugee uh, to get ca Canadian wow. citizenship, which was the biggest blessing. And um, I started to do a lot more social issue stuff. And then I got into a native rights film um, and after that, I did a film where I played Buffy St. Marie. Uh, um, she's quite well known in uh, Canada and across kind of the world. And uh, she was a 70s folk singer. And I played her uh, in an indie film, which got into TIFF and, and a lot of festivals worldwide. And uh, 
I walked into my house and I just started to think, oh, I, I could do this. And I just started making songs and it came really natural. And I was like, okay, so I'm, I'm going to do this now. <laughs> so that was it. That I love it. Oh, so dope. You know, and I love what you said earlier how you followed your dream. Because I feel like, you know, we do a lot of like what society tells us or what our parents tell us. And then you get caught in doing something that you dislike. And then it's like, okay, what is life now? So I love that you shared that you went out for your dream because I mean, so many people are so afraid, you know, to just step out and be like, I want to do what I love, not do what is like what we've been taught. Go do something that's, um, I guess you could say, um, secure. You know, yeah. so I, I love that so much. So let's talk about, you know, your, your new album, your song. What inspired you? What is the backstory when you're making your music? Um, I would say I'm really into uh, growth, personal growth. Super Bloom is it's about blossoming into your true self um, and inner growth and loving yourself. Uh, that's one of the biggest things that I'm focusing on. It doesn't mean that, um, you know, you're narcissistic because you love yourself. You can't love another person unless you love yourself first. Great. So, yeah. And also staying away from toxic relationships that might ruin your energy. Because again, that's part of loving yourself. Um, and yeah, the album is really me stepping away from the negativity into more po uh, positive thoughts. So it's like a rewiring of my brain. Uh, so when I sing my songs, they just make me feel better. So <laughs> that's, it's like therapy. It's kind of like taking that. yourself through, you know, a, a track listing of therapy. Totally, totally. I and love that. I think it's um, I think it's really interesting the journey of a songwriter and the art. I I think of being able to tap into your experiences internally and have kind of like the guts to to put it out to the world. How how is that process for you and how would you kind of, you know, is it something that can be taught or is it innately just in you? Because you would have, you know, with the album out now, a whole new fan base building of people that want to get into that. And, you know, how do you, you know, how, what path is a good way to start being a singer songwriter per se? Yeah, it's, that's such a great question. I would say staying, first of all, like, you know, when you're young, you know, people, you're kind of lost and you're asking for advice from people, which is great. And you should ask for some advice. But I think one of the biggest learning lessons I had was I needed to listen to myself. And I, in the end, I always did. I always listened to myself. But other people would project different things on me. And I had to just push my way through. Um, and I would say the biggest thing is really know who you are trust your gut and um take it more from a perspective if you're a songwriter to be more like a writer like i think there's a lot of musicians that are like oh yeah i you know i want to write like there's a difference between a vocalist and a singer songwriter so a songwriter is more like a poet you write out your words you bring it to the tune where a vocalist you play on a song that's already written about you so if you want to be a songwriter then you really have to treat your your album like you would treat like writing a book, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah, and it, and when you do your release, it's just like a book release, you know? You're talking about these kind of concepts and things and stuff like that. So I hope that gives some insight. Yeah. Well, yeah, I love that. I mean, so speaking of advice and, you know, the journey of your life and how it's had, like, you know, it's chapters and it's a book. Is there anything that you would go back and tell your younger self? Hmm. Wow. Oh my God. I, is this Oprah or something? Not to, put you, not to put you on the spot or anything, girl, but welcome to Super Soul Sipping. Oh, right? yeah. Spill the tea, girl. Sipping the tea. Definitely. I have my tea cup here today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Cheers to that. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Um, I would say, oh my God. <laughs> Been an identity <laughs> it's been an identity thing for me so I'm biracial so my mom is Caucasian and my dad is Filipino okay. um, I had a hard time finding like what side do I go on who do I hang out with and in the end I was always just super kind of I was on both sides um, but one of the things was I for me what I had to get over was not taking the projections of other people onto me 
Mm. I did that with my, I love my family and they support me, but they did want other things for me. And that was the hardest thing because I was, tr because I was so confused for so long. Um, so now I know what I'm doing and I'm really happy and I'm, I'm, I know who I am. And so I would say, I mean, like if I could go back as a kid, I would say to myself, like, just trust yourself more. It's okay. You're where you're meant to be. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> that No, that's some good advice. And it's, you know, it's, it's also nice for you to share that story because I mean, at the end of the day, like, I don't care what age you are. We're all trying to figure it out, you know, and that's about writing the chapter of your book. Like, you know, it's like to figure out yourself, what do you want? What do you don't, you know, what you don't want. And I mean, that even I feel like shows like in your music when you're talking about like yourself. And I mean, it's, that's part of the process. I mean, you've, you're making incredible music based on your story. So thank you. Girl, you gotta which, get which I, which is, I think a good point, Ari. And it's something like that question of going back to the childhood, perhaps the music wouldn't be so deep if you didn't go through that questionable time and answering that. So it was like, I always, I always loved that question, Ari. I was like, my God, if I could go back, I'd be like, girl, just tell them to bleep off. Who gives a <laughs> shit? You know, whatever. But I was totally. like, would I be the human being that I am and the human being that I'm becoming yeah. without, you know, those trash cans being thrown, all that bullshit, <laughs> that noise, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And I, I always say too, there is, I feel like there's no such thing as failure. There's just, you know, a time to reset and come back with more growth and more of what you've learned through the process, girl. Well, we got plenty of time, sis. Okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, if someone was sitting down and having tea with you, what would you say are a few ingredients um, to have a successful career being a songwriter? Um, I would say, uh, I know, like, it's interesting because a lot of people think like this, this, uh, being an artist is like an overnight thing. Yeah. And a lot of it's like, I, I hate to be like kind of a downer, but it's, it's really a lot of work and you need to just keep going. Cause some people will stay with you and some people won't. Um, and then you, it's, sometimes you'll just be literally all by yourself and then you have to start again. And then you just have to do it and believe in yourself. I would say that that's the biggest thing. And knowing that it's like a never ending process, like you're not just one thing, you know, we all are constantly growing and evolving and attracting people that will help us evolve and grow. And um, yeah. And just to be uh, not hard on yourself. I think that's the biggest thing. Don't be hard on yourself, you know? Um, and you know, that's you the know, hardest thing to do. <laughs> That's the hardest thing to do and separating yourself from that inner critic, just saying, okay, you're going to go over here because you're really messing up my mind and my whole path right now. Because if you listen to that inner critic, it throws you off the path. So yeah. I would this say- This got real Oprah real fast, children. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. People, the thing is because I think we're so consumed right. with- social media and showing highlight reels that I think it's great to be able to peel back the layers and get to know people because I like you said people think it's overnight success people think it's like oh that person has it easy but we all have a story and I feel like the more we're able to share our stories we all kind of build together and say hey like you know what if this person can do it so can I but I'm glad to know that you know like it's not just me going through something or it's not just me I'm not in this alone so I think I think it's good for us to all be able to, you know, share vulnerable moments. So it makes you authentic and relatable. Yes, authentic queens, honey, authentic queens. <laughs> I have one more question before we get into the rapid fire. It's, I'm going off script because this conversation's kind of, first of all, congrats on your La Palme magazine cover, looking fierce, looking yeah. fabulous. Yes, sir. I want to talk about how important as the artist now. We've touched a lot on you being a songwriter, but you're out there as an artist with your album. How important is creating and curating an image in terms of the fashion, in terms of the kind of like your branding stamp? Um, I think it's important, yeah, to connect the music with the fashion. I love fashion, um, and I love, yeah, the image is so important. Unfortunately, like I, I would say unfortunately, but it is, very important to connect that together 
um, and give a vibe and a, a general feeling to the audience and connecting with the audience through what you're wearing or in a photo. And I remember somebody's told me when you take a, a photo, make sure to look past the lens, like, cause you're just trying to connect with people. Um, yeah. That's that was a tip. That, wait, that's a good tip. Wait a minute. <laughs> For those that are listening, I'm serving looks right now. <laughs> and I'm sipping my tea very stank. <laughs> That's hilarious. Good, good point. I like that. I'm adding that to my tip book. Look past the lens, serving looks, Chad. Yes. Right into the soul, into the eye of the photographer. So you hit the photographer. Get it. Get it. That's some good tea right there. Um, okay, well, I think we're going to dive into some rapid fire questions. Um, first, first thought in your mind. Rapid, yes, rapid. first thought. Okay. Um, if you had one superpower, what would it be? It would be to fly. Nice, okay. nice. If your, ha if your house was on fire, what two things would you run back and get? My clothes <laughs> and uh, a Buddha, my Buddha that's sitting above me. What about your husband? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's coming, too. <laughs> Girl, he just died in that fire, and you, you're you looking fierce in your fashion. Girl, bye. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yay, yay. <laughs> um, if you could have uh, dinner with three people, dead or alive, who would they be? Um, yeah. Uh, I would say Johnny Cash, Bob Dylan, and Stevie Nicks. Boom. Oh, that's Boom. A, that is a room. That is a room. Okay. Let's do one, one more. What's the best? Let's end it because you're very, this has been a very whimsical chat and I really enjoyed that. What's the best pieces of advice you've ever been given and by whom, if you remember? Good question. Um, I feel, I, I don't know. I think I was in a Kabbalah church and some rabbi told me, in all doubt, have certainty. Mm. And that thing helped me get through some projects that I thought wouldn't happen. In all doubt, have certainty. So that, that's the best advice. That's a great way to wrap up this interview because hello, <laughs> welcome to COVID-19 times, Chad. Right? Just yeah. having faith, right? When we can't see what's going to happen with the uncertainty. Um, well, girl, it has been a pleasure. Uh, for people who are living under a rock, let people know where they can follow you at, where they can find your music and the whole nine. Spill the tea, girl. Yeah, uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Tara Byer um, at, or on my website. You can subscribe. I'm pretty much everywhere. iTunes, Spotify. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And go and cup that new album, honey, Super Bloom. It just came out. It's, uh, it's blooming. And, and this is a face to watch. Not this one. Not me. Not me. <laughs> This one in the box downstairs. Where can people find you, Miss Ariane? People can find me across the board at Ariane Andrew. Where can people Thank find you? <laughs> Girl, <laughs> I don't have a board. So across the board, you can find me at Matt Dillon 1983. And until next time, guys, we will catch you on another special edition of Quarantine of Sibyl Let's pop it out. Number